Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Youth Talk. I would first like to welcome my guest in the studio. I have with me Sheikh Asim Luqman al Hakim. It's a pleasure having, pleasure having you with us, Sheikh Asim. Glad to be here. I'd also like to welcome my three participants. On my left, I have Mahmoud, who is a translator, as well as Tariq, a student at the Academy of Art. And on my right, I have Abdullah, who is a computer programmer. Sheikh Asim, we're talking in this episode of Youth Talk about prayer, and especially for youth. Let's start off with something very, very basic. What is the importance of prayer in Islam? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. It was said that any religion that does not have prayer has no value at all. And this is basically true. Because prayer is the connection between you and your creator, your Lord. And in Islam, prayer has a very important role as it is the second pillar of Islam. Mm -hmm. And Islam is based on five main pillars. The second one is prayer, prayer the five daily prayers. And if you research Islamic traditions, though I don't like the word tradition, if you research the Islamic law, rules, verdicts, you will find that most, if not all, these rules and instructions were revealed to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was on earth. Mm -hmm. And it was revealed to him either by or through the archangel angel Gabriel or through revelation directly from Allah Azza wa Jal, with the exception of prayers. The prayer was made obligatory upon all Muslims in the seventh heaven when the Prophet وسلم, had the miraculous night journey to the seventh heaven in one night and came back. And that was in the period of Mecca Dawah. And once you look into it and how it was revealed and, and made uh, obligatory to our Prophet Sallallahu you will be amazed of it. At the very beginning, Allah Azza wa made it 50 prayers during the day and night. And by far, if it was as it is, it was uh, then, if we were supposed to do 50 prayers per day and night, I tell you that most Muslims, if not all, would not do it because they're so lazy and, hmm. and you know our, our, our conditions. When the Prophet came back, he was met by Musa, Moses. May Allah be pleased with him. So he told him what, what, what took place, what happened. So our Prophet said that Allah Azza wa has given me 50 prayers during the day and night that I should perform my nation and myself. He told him, Moses, Go back again to your Lord and ask him to reduce it because I've been dealing with the sons of Israel for so long and man, I know them. They're going to cause a lot of problems for you. So go back again. So the Prophet went back and Allah Azza wa Jal reduced it. And every time he went to Moses and he told him, he, he told him go back again and Allah kept on reducing them five, five, five until they became five daily prayers in the day and night. Moses was not satisfied. May Allah be, uh, uh, may, uh, uh, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. So he told him, go back to your Lord again and ask him for another reduction of these five. So the Prophet said, Muhammad I'm, uh, I cannot. You know, this is too much. I'm, I'm embarrassed of going on and off to my Lord asking him for uh, reducing the prayers. So Allah declared that it, things do not change. Whatever I declare, they have to stay as they are. Mm -hmm. It is five daily prayers, but you will be rewarded for 50. So mm -hmm. these five daily prayers are essential in our religion. They keep on regenerating our faith and they keep on reconnecting us with Allah Azza wa Jal throughout the day and night. And that is why we have a lot of faith in our hearts when we preserve these prayers 
and we stay al away from a lot of the sins because we are always reminded of Allah throughout these prayers. What about uh, the one who uh, always pray, pray, but he, uh, he, he, he almost do sin or almost uh, make wrongs and he still pray? So what about that? Again, th this is a different thing altogether because prayer is a pillar of Islam. You have to do it. If you don't do it, then you are not considered as a Muslim. You have to pray. This prayer helps you in staying away from sin, but it does not prevent you definitely. It doesn't prevent. So if you are weak by nature and you sin, this does not mean that you should abandon prayer. Yeah. On the contrary, we tell those who pray abandon sin. But they do contradict, yet they can coexist to a certain period of time, and man by nature is sinful. Mm -hmm. How strong is the role of parents in bringing up their children with the importance of prayer? It, it is, it, it's very important because the Prophet وسلم, and if I recall correctly, throughout my researching in the Islamic uh, uh, laws, in the Hadith and in the, uh, in the Quran, mm -hmm. the only situation where the Prophet tells us وسلم, to spank a child is only on prayer. The mm -hmm. Prophet says, وسلم, order your children to pray when they're seven years old and spank them for not praying when they're 10 years old. And nowhere else in the Quran or in the Sunnah where we're told to spank children for doing anything except for prayer. So the Prophet did not tell us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, spank your children if they don't finish their dish. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell us, spank your children if they don't do their homework or so on. He tells us, spank them, and he does not tell us, torture them or hang them from the chandelier <laughs> for a day or two. He doesn't tell us to, you know, cut their limbs or something. He's spanking them in a nice, gentle way, but to show them that they this have did, wrong. yes, they something, they wrong. something that was wrong. And this hadith by itself is miraculous on its own. In terms of what? In terms of the Prophet telling us to order them from seven years old till they're ten years old, but verbally only to pray. Not to insult them, not to hmm. criticize them, not to do anything to make them stay away from prayer. On the contrary, to encourage them. So imagine if you have a child for three years, you multiply this by 360 days and then multiply it by five prayers per day and night. You do the math. Maybe it's approximately <laughs> 3,000, 4,000, I don't know. If you keep on t saying and ordering this child for all this amount of time to pray, I guarantee you when he's 10 years old, it's going to be in his system. It's going to be in his blood veins. But unfortunately, I know parents with kids that are 25, 30 years old, and they do not pray. They do not wake them for Fajr prayer. Whenever I talk to his father, he said, he's still young. He's 25 years old. What are you waiting for until the guy is, 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 is 50? No. This is the Islamic way of ordering, instructing, and raising our kids how to 